Hello, children of God. I have something very special inside this envelope. It's an invitation. Now, you've probably received an invitation before, right? Maybe to someone's birthday party or another kind of party. Usually, it'll have your name on the front, and then on the inside, it'll have some details about when and where the party is going to be, and it usually will ask you to tell someone if you're going to plan to be there. Well, this is not a birthday party invitation. It's actually an invitation to my wedding. Now, unfortunately, if you're not all invited, in fact, it's only a couple weeks away. Oh, wow. I've still got a lot to do. That's a scary thought. Anyways, but it tells you who's getting married, and it invites you to come and tells you the time and the place and asks you to RSVP. That means let me know if you're coming so we know how many plates to get and all sorts of other things that we're still figuring out. But anyways, that aside, have you ever given an invitation to someone? Maybe you've had a birthday party. Now, when you give an invitation to someone, it's kind of like you have to think about who you want to invite to be at your party, right? And, you know, sometimes maybe you get to invite the whole class, but sometimes your parents might say, you can only invite a few certain friends. And it can be hard to decide who's in or who's out. You know, it was hard for me to decide who to give invitations to my wedding to, because there are a lot of people that I really like, and there are a lot of people who are special to me, but I don't want a lot of people to be at my wedding. I just kind of want it sort of small. So it was really hard because I had to think about who I liked the most, or maybe who was the most meaningful and most special in my life. And maybe when you're inviting people to a party, you think about who your favorite friends are. Because after all, let's face it, we all have those favorite friends, those people who are really awesome and really special and really close to us. I mean, we don't want just anybody or everyone coming to our party, right? Well, here's a question. Do you think that God has favorites? Does he write special invitations that are only for some people, but not for everyone? You know, this used to be the way that people thought it was. There used to be people who said that being part of God's family was like a very exclusive sort of club that only certain people were invited to, and only certain people were allowed to be part of God's chosen, chosen family, which is kind of I guess makes you feel special if you're one of those chosen, but it's pretty sad if you're not. But I have some wonderful news because that's not the way that God is. God doesn't just choose a few certain special people and everybody else is just out of luck. No, of course not, because God loves all of us and he wants all of us to be part of his family. He wants us all to be chosen. He wants us all to be in heaven with him someday. There's a really neat story in the New Testament in the book of Acts, and it's about a man named Peter. Well, there are a lot of cool stories about a man named Peter and Paul and a lot of other stories. But anyways, there's this one specific story about Peter. And Peter was hanging out on the roof one day, because that's sometimes what you would do. And he was sort of hungry because it was almost lunchtime. And he had this vision. And in this vision, there were all these animals that were just kind of flying from the sky. And a voice came and spoke and told him, Peter, take and eat these things. Now the catch here was that in those days they had very specific rules about what they should or shouldn't eat. It was part of their faith and who they were. Well, he had this vision three times in a row and he just thought, this must be telling me something. And then right after that, a man showed up and this man, was someone who wanted to know more about God. But he wasn't a Jew. At the time, most of those people were Jewish, and they thought only Jewish people were able to hear about the Lord. Only Jewish people should know about Jesus and should be part of that special club. But this man showed up and wanted to know more, and so Peter realized that God was telling him he needed to tell this man more about Jesus. Just like all of the animals were okay to eat and all of those things were clean, God wanted Peter to know that all people were clean, that all people should hear the good news of the gospel. It wasn't something to just save for just a few people. 
everyone should hear the good news. And so Peter started going around to other places and telling everyone, no matter who they were, no matter what background they came from, no matter what they looked like, Peter wanted to tell them about Jesus. And God wants us to do the same thing. First of all, God wants us to know that we are loved, that we are part of his family, that he loves us, and that he wants us to be close to him, and that he is close to us. That's great news because that means no matter who you are, no matter what you've done or what you do, God still loves us and still cares about us. So that's pretty awesome and spectacular. No matter who you are or what you look like, you're part of God's family. Now, the other great thing is that we can go and invite others to know Jesus. We can invite them to church. We can tell them about how much we love Jesus and how special he is. We can just be their friend. It goes a long way to just show someone that you care about them, that you love them, and they'll see there's something special about you, and hopefully they'll want that to be part of their lives too. So maybe it's sending an invitation. Maybe it's just talking to someone. Maybe it's praying for someone too. There are many ways that we can be just like Peter, that we can tell the good news to others and invite them. And it doesn't just have to be the people that we like. It doesn't just have to be the people that are closest to us or the ones that we would want to have at our birthday party or wedding. No, everyone, everyone needs to hear this great news. And everyone needs to know that their lives can be blessed by knowing Jesus too. So what are you waiting for? Who will you talk to? Who will you share this good news with? Well, first, why don't we thank God that he does want us all to be in his family and that he loves us all. And we can ask him for help to share that good news and spread it to all around us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for making us part of your family. Help us to share your love and spread the good news with others around us. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So go share the message. Share the story, share the good news, and keep passing it on. Don't forget, we have new videos every week, so tune in again for more craft and children's message ideas. Now, go make some disciples of your own. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time.